Welcome to this video on phase shift keying PSK. In this video, we'll cover the fundamentals of PSK and demonstrate how digital data is transmitted using phase modulation. We'll also explore different PSK types, including BPSK, QPSK, and 8PSK, and analyze their key characteristics. Then we'll move on to a MATLAB simulation where we'll visualize the constellation diagram and encode data bits into a modulated signal. Let's start by answering the question, what is PSK? Phase shift keying, or PSK, is a digital modulation technique that transmits data by shifting the phase of a constant frequency carrier wave. Think of it as a way of encoding zeros and ones into changes in the wave's phase. Imagine we have a simple digital signal made up of zeros and ones. To transmit the first zero, we use a sine wave with a constant amplitude. Now, when the next symbol is 1, we shift the phase of the wave by 180 degrees to indicate a change. If the following symbol is also 1, the phase stays the same. But as soon as the signal switches back to 0, the phase shifts again. The process continues throughout the entire signal, with phase changes occurring only when the data transitions from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. This specific type of PSK is known as binary phase shift keying, BPSK. With only two possible states, the phase shifts by 180 degrees between them, making BPSK one of the simplest and most reliable forms of phase modulation. Note that there is no strict rule dictating how phase states must correspond to specific bits. This mapping of states to bits is also possible. The only requirement is that both the transmitter and receiver agree on which phase represents which bit, ensuring accurate data transmission. Similar to other digital modulation techniques, PSK can increase throughput by using more phase states. QPSK, Quadrature Phase Shift Keying, uses four phase states, each separated by 90 degrees, allowing for twice the transmission speed of BPSK. In the constellation diagram, the QPSK states are typically offset by 45 degrees, making it similar to quadrature amplitude modulation, QAM. We can increase the number of states even further. 8PSK uses 8 states, allowing for the transmission of 3 bits per symbol. However, as we add more states, the separation between them weakens, which can make the signal more prone to errors. For higher data rates, other modulation schemes like QAM are usually preferred, as they offer better performance in these scenarios. Now, let's jump into MATLAB, where I'll demonstrate how to modulate data bits using the PSK modulator, plot the constellation, and visualize the modulated signal. At the beginning of the script, we'll clear the workspace and close any open plots. The first section will set the parameters. We'll define the PSK modulation order, which determines the type of PSK to be used, and set it to 2 for BPSK. After that, we'll specify the constellation offset and initialize it to zero radians for now. Next, we have the symbol order or mapping, which can be set to either binary or gray. This determines how phase states correspond to specific bits. I will demonstrate the difference between them later in the video. Finally, we'll define the array of bits to be transmitted. Let's move on to the next section, PSK modulation. To modulate the bits, we'll use the PSK modulator function. The first parameter of this function is either the bits in binary format or the symbols expressed as integers. The second parameter is the modulation order, which will be BPSK in our case. Next, we specify the constellation offset, followed by the symbol order. Finally, we define the input type, where we indicate that our input data, bits, is in binary format. In this section, we'll also calculate the symbol length, which will come in handy later in the code. To finish, we will display the constellation diagram. The first part of the code is ready. Let's run it. As you can see, the PSK symbols variable contains 1 for 0 bits and negative 1 for 1 bits, representing a 180 degree phase shift. This can also be observed in the constellation plot on the right. Now, let's move on to the next part, where we modulate the carrier wave using these PSK symbols. To do this, we first need to define a sampling frequency, which determines how many samples are generated per second of the carrier wave. Next, we generate the time samples. Since we want one second of signal per symbol and we have six symbols, this results in 6000 samples. After dividing by the sampling frequency, the time values will range from 0 to 6 seconds. Next, 
we generate the carrier wave using the sine function. Normally, one period of a sine wave spans from 0 to 2 pi, but to scale this range from 0 to 1, we multiply the time values by 2 pi. Then, we repeat each PSK symbol 1000 times to match the length of the carrier wave, ensuring both variables have the same size. Finally, we generate the modulated signal by multiplying the PSK symbols with the carrier wave. If the symbol is 1, the carrier wave remains unchanged, but if it's negative 1, the phase shifts by 180 degrees. Note that for BPSK, we only need the real part of the PSK symbols, as they contain only 1s and negative 1s. Now, let's plot our signal. We'll use a tiled layout to divide the plot into two sections. The top section will display the transmitted bits, while the bottom will show the modulated sine wave for each symbol. With that, our code is complete. Let's run it. As you can see in the plots, whenever the bits change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, the phase of the modulated signal shifts by 180 degrees, which is characteristic of BPSK modulation. Now, let's increase the modulation order to 4 and experiment with QPSK modulation. To do this, we need to make a few updates to the code. First, instead of manually defining the input bits, we'll generate them automatically. Since we want one symbol for each PSK state, we'll create four symbols ranging from 0 to 3 for QPSK. Then, we'll convert these symbols into binary format. Let's also remember that QPSK typically uses a constellation offset of 45 degrees, which is pi over 4 radians. We also need to update the carrier wave. Since we're now working with complex symbol states, we need both the in-phase I and quadrature Q components. We'll keep the old carrier wave as the quadrature component and use cosine for the in-phase component. Finally, we'll update the modulated signal to incorporate both carrier wave components With all the changes in place, let's run the code. As you can see in the plot, the constellation now has four states, each shifted by 45 degrees. On the right, you can also observe how the phase shifts in the modulated signal, as well as the fact that each PSK symbol now encodes two bits instead of one. Next, let's compare binary and gray symbol mapping. To see the difference, we'll use eight PSK with an offset of zero. Now, let's switch to gray mapping and observe the effect. As you can see, binary mapping assigns bits to states in sequential integer order. In contrast, gray mapping is structured so that each successive state differs by only one bit, reducing the likelihood of errors during transmission. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. You can also find the code link in the description. If you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more. See you next time.